Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem we're going to be doing today. Before we jump into this though, I just wanted to let you know I have done a problem uh, similar to this on my channel already. In that other video, I went into a lot more detail about you know continuity and kind of what everything that we do in a problem like this actually means. If you haven't already seen that, I would go check that out. But what I'm going to show you today is kind of a shortcut of how to do this kind of problem that takes a lot less time than what I explained in that other video. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The problem we're going to be doing today is find the values of a and b that make the piecewise function continuous everywhere where we have this piecewise function here. We're going to be using 2x minus 1 for all x less than negative 1, ax plus b for all x between negative 1 and 1, and then 7 for x greater than 1. So like I said, I'm just going to be kind of showing you the shortcut of how to do a problem like this. Real quick before we get into that, we want to take a quick look at each of these three pieces individually, though, um, just to make sure that each of them would be continuous by itself. So if we just looked at the function y equals 2x minus 1, or the function y equals ax plus b, or the function y equals 7, any of those three functions would be continuous for all x values no matter what a and b are. Right, because they're all just linear functions which are continuous everywhere for all x values. So what that tells us is when we have a piecewise function that's made up of three individual pieces that would normally be continuous everywhere by themselves, we just need to make sure that our piecewise function doesn't have a jump discontinuity when we switch from one function to the next. So in other words, we want to look at when we switch from this function to this function, that happens at x equals negative 1. And then, again, we'll switch from this function to this function when x equals 1. So all we really need to check is that our piecewise function is continuous at x equals negative 1 and at x equals 1. And if we can do that, you know, that a and b combination would make this function continuous everywhere. So all we have to do to do that is consider the height of each of these functions at these couple of points. And what I mean by height is the output of those functions. So in other words, when we have our input is x equals negative 1, we need to make sure that these two functions have the same output so that they line up when we switch between them at negative 1. And then again, we need to make sure that these two functions have the same output when we switch between them at x equals 1. So all that means is we will take x equals negative 1, and we'll plug that into these two functions and set them equal to make sure they have the same output. So when x equals negative 1, this function will give us 2 times negative 1 minus 1, and this function will give us a times negative 1 plus b. So this is the output of this function when x is negative 1, and this is the output of this function when x is negative 1. So then the other thing we need to make sure is that this function has the same output as this one when x equals 1. So when x equals 1, the output of this, this middle function here will be a times 1 plus b. And that needs to have the same output as 7. 7 is just a constant. The output of this will always be 7 for any x value. So when x is 1, the output of this function is just 7. So we need to make sure that our a and b satisfy both of these equations. So all we really have here now is just a system of equations with two variables and two equations, which we can solve using a couple different methods. But first thing that's usually easiest to do is start by simplifying these two functions. So let's do that first. So this first function here, 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2, minus 1 would be negative 3. And then this function here, we would just have negative 1 times a is just negative a plus b. Then our second function, 1 times a is just a plus b equals 7. So now we have these two equations. Um, there's a couple different ways we can solve a system of equations like this. What I'm going to do is use the substitution method. So all that means is we're going to solve one of our equations for one of the variables and then plug that into the other one. So let's just take this first equation here. And we'll solve this first equation for b. And then we'll take that b value and put it into our other equation. So to do that, all we have to do is add a over to this side. So we'll add a to both sides. 
and we will get those canceling. So we'll just get B equals A minus three. Okay, so now we know that A minus three is the same as B, so we can take this and plug it in for B here. So that'll give us A plus A minus three equals seven, because B and A minus three are equal. Now we can just solve this for A. So we'll have A plus A minus three equals seven. These will just combine to give us two A. And then if we add our three over to the other side, we'll just get 10. So that tells us A is five, right? Because if we divide both sides by two, we'll get two canceling there. 10 divided by two is five. So A is five. And now we can just take this and plug it in for this equation for B that we had to get B. So that'll just be B equals five minus three. So B equals two. So B equals two and A equals five. We'll make sure that our original function F is continuous everywhere because it makes sure that it's continuous at those two places where it transitions between those three functions. So let me know if that all made sense. Drop a comment below um, if you have any questions and I'll put a link to another video here solving a kind of a similar problem so you can keep practicing this stuff and really get it down.